Alright, hello YouTube, let's try this one again. I've been trying to make this video for a little bit, but it, I don't know, it just keeps having problems. But let's try and see if we can do this. We are going to talk about the best way as a beginner with Caves of Cud to get your feet wet in the game. Now, I'm assuming you know the menus, I'm assuming you know the combat system, I'm assuming you know some of the ins and outs of the game, but you're finding it hard every single time you get into the game, you're getting killed, you're getting, you know, pushed around. And you just need a character build that's going to help you get through safely, at least through the first few missions, maybe even out to the, the desert. That's the sort of thing that I want to get you to today. And there's a very easy way to do this. Now, this isn't for everybody, but this is for the people who have tried a few builds and are really struggling and want to know what's a build that's safe and easy to work with. So let's take a look. Cue the fancy transition. And here we are. OK, so first of all, you have some choices here. You can start with your classic gameplay, you can pick the slightly lighter with the role play or the creative option, basically. So I am going to go with the hardcore option. That's how I normally play. Feel free to play the way that you want to play. Obviously, the role play one's a little easier with checkpoints in the towns. And I do not recommend going with random at this point in time if you're still learning because you need to pick some specific stuff. So, all right, we take a look here and we see that we have your pre-generated character, your new character, and then your library, and then you have basically a random one. We're gonna take a pre-generated character, obviously, because we want to go with the simplest thing that we can do, so you guys don't have to worry about picking skills and so on and so forth. You don't have to worry about picking what powers to have. So this is probably your best bet to get into it really quick. All right, there's mutants, which are kind of like the superheroes, and then we have the kin, which are more like the cybernetic kind of people that add things. The kin have better stats to start out with. They're like playing a human in Dungeons and & Dragons, and if you're playing a mutant, that's more like playing one of like the elves or the dwarves that have a little bit of extra power to them to make up for not having the best stats in the world like the, uh, the true kin do. True Kin do have some wonderful builds and I highly encourage you to check them out as well. But for our purposes, we are going to go with the mutant because the mutants actually start out with some powerful abilities that you can use in the beginning game to get used to how the game works. If you're just playing a True Kin, it's a little bit more difficult because you're relying on your base stats and combat prowess and all that other stuff. But if you come with a mutant like this Gunwing, we're going to take the Gunwing you're going to start out with some abilities that are going to provide you with a lot of survivability. So pick the Gunwing, and this is the summary of the class. You can see here are the stats. It's an agility-based class. I'll explain why that's important in a minute. But also we have the wonderful powers, the mutations on the other side. The important ones are these wings and also this force bubble. These are the ones that are going to help you immensely to survive any sort of situation that you're in. Now, again, I'm not claiming that this is the only way to do it. I'm just giving you an idea. So let's start in Jabba. You're not going to want to start in any of the other areas. Jabba is at least a little bit easier to predict and control. So I do recommend starting out in Jabba. And once it sets up the world, like I said, there are many ways that you could play this. But this is a way that I can almost guarantee you that you'll have a much easier time. Don't forget to read the lore because sometimes you will find hints in the lore that will help you out as well. Or locations in the lore that you can go to later that will be important. Okay, but just for laughs, I'm gonna go ahead and oh, I don't wanna start it here. I'm gonna just take on this entire town and a few other enemies just to prove how powerful this class can be and show you what you need to do. Now, if you don't know this, you can steal from pretty much any house as long as they don't have a window. But if they do have a window, like you see the one just above me there, and you try to do this, taking the thing, you get the warning, you are gonna enrage the entire town, which is in, in this case, this is my purpose. I'm actually doing it to show you that uh, you can get away with this. Okay, so we took a bit of a hit there, but we're going to be okay because we do have our special ability, which is our wings. Now you can see we are a little bit in trouble here. We've got the health warning popping up here. So what we're going to need to do is we need to get out of here. In this game, speed is very helpful to getting you out of these difficult situations. Wings is not only going to let you fly, which will get you out of melee range. It's also going to give you a boost in speed. So one of the things with fly is you will actually fall 5% of the time. So it's not really going to be a foolproof way of getting away, but it is at least going to help you watch. I can kind of kite these guys around for a little bit and they're not going to be able to catch me. So I, I could try hiding in here. I don't think that's actually going to work. So I'll kite these guys around for a bit and show you. Even if I fall, which you'll see. I, oh, yeah. See, I probably will fall over here. Now they're they're back in range of me. They're ready to get me, but I can still move pretty fast. Our health is a little bit low, so we're going to have to consider using maybe some witchwood bark. But let's keep going and just see if we can run away. 
our speed that we have is so fast that we can run until we heal. I'm actually just going to run right off the screen here. This is probably not the best idea because we've got a lot of these dog faces up here that we have to worry about. And they have rocks and they're going to throw the rocks at us. So that's probably not the best of ideas. Plus, you probably want to be going a little bit slower than I'm going. Maybe a little bit more strategic. See, I'm like moving a little bit at a time here and now. And I'll be a bit more careful. Just that little bit of running around and I've got all of my health back. Now, the second thing that we have is our gun, which is our ranged weapon. It's a lot of damage and actually it's guns plural. So it's almost like a double damage attack because you're firing both guns at once. So you have six rounds in each gun, which means every six rounds you're going to have to reload. So do factor in your reload when you're doing this. But all you got to do is create some distance, take a few shots, create a little bit more distance, take a few shots, pick a bottle off the shelf, take a few shots. You know what I'm talking about? Keep your distance and then use your two guns to make quick work of these guys. You're doing a lot of damage per shot with this and you're getting two shots. So it's a very effective way of keeping yourself safe and making sure that the enemies disappear quickly enough. If you do take too much damage, pop some witch wood, which we're going to do right now. Or you could also pop your force bubble, which we'll do a little later. Some people get worried about the witch wood because it does cause confusion, which can make you have difficulty navigating or attacking. But the heal that you get from it is not only instantaneous, but you also get a little bit of extra heal per turn. So it's worth it. It's well worth it in almost every single situation. So we took our witch wood, we're out of trouble, make sure that we take the guy out. And now we're pretty much all set. Now, there's a few hombres left in town, so we are going to head back into town after we grab some of this stuff. Time for a little fast forward here, so we'll get to the next guy that we have to take out, which is right here. And then we'll head back into town once we've got this guy taken care of. Now, as you might have noticed watching the damage bar up top, I have been taking a ton of damage, but that's because I'm playing really sloppy. I'm letting them hit me just so that we can show the healing that you get just from running away from people. So you would probably play this a lot cleaner than what I'm doing. You would keep your distance, start by keeping your distance, start from firing right away. Make sure that you start firing before they even see you if possible. Obviously, you're not going to shoot up Joppa. We don't want to do that because that's going to end your run pretty quickly. If you well, it won't end your run, but it would make it infinitely harder for you. It would basically kill the whole main storyline for you to start out with. So you wouldn't be blowing up Joppa like this. But if you wanted to, technically you could. What you are going to be facing is a lot of the dog faces, some baboons, maybe some other things. like so some of those vicious turtles and stuff like that. But I can promise you when I'm not playing like a complete bonehead, uh, we don't take nearly as much damage as this. And I can get pretty far. I can usually, like I said, get to the desert city and uh, we're pretty good from there. You know, you can go on and level up from there. Then it, it gets a little bit tougher and you might have to know a bit more about the game. At least this way you can get your feet wet, get yourself started. Let's go into town and let's take, let's see, maybe we'll just try to take on the warden, see if we can take on a real enemy, see how we do. After running around and picking up all the loot, which I had to do because OCD, we run, turn back to town here and let's run over and take out the rest of this town if we can. And then we'll try to take out that blue warden over there, which you can barely see. What I want to show you here is force bubble. That's force bubble. See, it pushed our enemy back and plus it also prevents them from hitting us with any ranged attacks. So that's very good as your your oh snap button that you got to use if you've got too many melee guys around you your flight is down or your flight's not going to work or there's range guys around you push that force bubble it's going to give you another six to you know six to 20 rounds depending on how high you have the skill stacked but it's going to give you a lot of time to basically heal and do the shooting all right let's let's shoot at this warden and see what he's got for us this is stupid don't ever try this this is a dumb thing to do at level one but just to give you an idea of how I can just basically sit here and pop this guy. Now, he's eventually going to get really, really mad with us and he's going to unleash all heck. But but even being a complete stupid person like I am. Oh, wow. Yeah, that really hurt. Even being the dunce that I am, I can still survive quite a bit. Now, of course, if he gets up on me with melee, I'm in deep trouble because I don't have much as far as how I can get away from him. But maybe he's close to maybe he's close to dying. I don't know. We could try it and see. I think he's probably going to bop us, though. And yeah, let's uh, see if we can maybe try to wait. No, it's not going to let us wait. Um, I don't know if I had any more Witch Widow. He's right up on top of us. Yeah, this is pretty much the end. Anyway, you get the idea that the Gunslinger, uh, sorry, the Gun Wing is a very effective character. First of all, for the speed, the agility to get away, the wings, which allow you to fly out of melee range and force bubble, which can push people out of melee range and also protect you from ranged attacks. This is a great way to get yourself started. All right, YouTube. Thanks so much for watching, like and subscribe. And hey, YouTube, you're up.